Good morning. Good morning. Thank you for joining us for worship here today. I have a few announcements before we begin our service. Uh, we have VBS coming up in June. Uh, that will be June 17th through the 21st. And so if you have uh, kids and want to register for that, registration is open. Uh, information is here in the news and notes. We're also looking for volunteers to help make VBS happen. It happens with our volunteers. And so we will need volunteers to help set up beforehand and help run events uh, during the week. And so if you are interested in volunteering or want more information about what that would entail, you can contact Chrissy. Uh, her office phone number is there in the announcement there. So check that out if you're interested. On Thursday, May 9th, we will be having our Ascension Day service. Ascension Day is 40 days after Easter uh, when Jesus ascends into heaven. And so we will be celebrating that feast day that Thursday at 7 p.m. And a special part of that service will be that the chime choir that's been practicing uh, before Kids for Christ each Thursday will be performing uh, at that. They'll be uh, leading some songs and things. So uh, if you need some extra incentive to come to that feast day service, uh, it'll be neat to, to hear them. They're, they sound wonderful each week. So I would highly encourage you to come for that service. And then uh, this coming Friday, May 3rd, uh, we are going to be having a fundraiser to help support our OWLS group. Uh, Countryside Nursery and Garden Center uh, has agreed that if, if, we, if you show your flyer, and there's flyers in the narthex for this, uh, if you show them the flyer when you make your purchase, 18% uh, of the proceeds will go to support uh, our OWLS ministry and all that they do. And so, uh, so if you're looking for that, Friday is the day to do that. Uh, and be sure to bring a flyer and, and mention that uh, when you check out there. And lots of other great things going on. Uh, please do check the news and notes when you have the time. For our service today, we'll be using Divine Service Setting 1 on page 151. And in our gospel lesson today, we're going to get another I am statement from Jesus. Last week, we heard Jesus teach, I am the good shepherd. This week, we hear Jesus teach, I am the vine, and you are the branches. And so we'll be talking about what he's teaching there, how he teaches about abiding in him and producing uh, good fruit from connection to that vine. We begin with our opening hymn, hymn 465. <laughs>
continue on page 151. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you, God, according to you, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all of your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ, and by his authority, I forgive you all of your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. A little while, and you will see me no longer. And again a little while, and you will see me. I will extol you, my God and King, and bless your name forever and ever. Every day I will bless you and praise your name forever and ever. The Lord is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. All your works shall give thanks to you, O Lord, and all your saints shall bless you. My mouth will speak the praise of the Lord, and let all flesh bless his holy name forever and ever. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. A little while, and you will see me no longer. And again a little while, and you will see me. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above, and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord.
be with you. Let us pray. O oh God, you make the minds of your faithful to be of one will. Grant that we may love what you have commanded and desire what you promise, that among the many changes of this world, our hearts may be fixed where true joys are found. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. from the books of Acts, chapter 8, verses 26 through 40. An angel of the Lord said to Philip, Rise and go toward the south, to the road that goes down from Jerusalem to Gaza. This is a desert place. And he rode and went. And there was an Ethiopian, a eunuch, a court official of Candace, queen of the Ethiopians, who was in charge of all her treasure. He had come to Jerusalem to worship and was returning seated in his chariot, and he was reading the prophet Isaiah. And the spirit said to Philip, go over and join this chariot. So Philip ran to him and heard him reading Isaiah the prophet, and he asked, do you understand what you are reading? <coughs> and he said, how can I unless someone guides me? And he invited Philip to come up and sit with him. Now the passage of the scripture that he was reading was this. Like a sheep, he was led to the slaughter, and like a lamb before its shearer is silent, so he opens not his mouth. In his humiliation, justice was denied him. Who can describe this generation? For his life is taken away from the earth. And the eunuch said to Philip, about whom, I ask you, does the prophet say this? About himself or about someone else? Then Philip opened his mouth, and beginning with the scripture, he told him the good news about Jesus. And as they were going along the road, they came to some water. And the eunuch said, See, here is water. What prevents me from being baptized? And he commanded the chariot to stop, and they both went down into the water, Philip and the eunuch. And he baptized him. And when they came up out of the water, the Spirit of the Lord carried Philip away. And the eunuch saw him no more. And he went on his way rejoicing. But Philip found himself at Azotus. And as he passed through, he preached the gospel to all the towns until he came to Caesarea. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The second reading is from 1 John fourth chapter, verses 1 through 21. <coughs> Beloved, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits to see whether they are from God. For many false prophets have gone out into the world. But this, by this you know the spirit of God. Every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is from God. And every spirit that does not confess Jesus is not from God. This is the spirit of the Antichrist, which you heard was coming and is now in the world already. Little children, you are from God and have overcome them. For he who is in you is greater than he who is in the world. They are from the world, therefore they speak from the world and the world listens to them. We are from God. Whoever knows God listens to us. Whoever is not from God does not listen to us. By this we know the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. Beloved, let us not let us love one another, for love is from God, and whoever loves has been born of God and knows God. Anyone who does not love does not know God, because God is love. In this the love of God was made manifest among us 
that God sent his only son into the world so that we might live through him. And this is love, not that we have loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be the propitiation for our sins. Beloved, if God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. No one has ever seen God. If we love one another, God abides in us, and his love is perfected in us. By this we know that we abide in him and he in us, because he has given us his spirit. And we have seen and testified that the Father has sent his Son to be the Savior of the world. Whoever confesses that Jesus is the Son of God, God abides in him and he in God. So we have come to know and to believe the love that God has for us. God is love, and whoever abides in, <laughs> excuse me, whoever abides in love abides in God, and God abides in him. By this is love perfected within us, so that we may have confidence for the day of judgment, because he is so also are we in his world, in this world. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear. For fear has to do with punishment, and whoever fears has not been perfected in love. We love because he first loved us. If anyone says, I love God, and he hates his brother, he is a liar. For he who does not love his brother, whom he has seen, cannot love God, whom he has not seen. And this commandment we have from him. Whoever loves God must also love his brother. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. According to St. John, the 15th chapter. Jesus said, I am the true vine, and my Father is the vine dresser. Every branch of mine that does not bear fruit, he takes away, and every branch that does bear fruit, he prunes, that it may bear more fruit. Already you are clean because of the word that I have spoken to you. Abide in me, and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. Whoever abides in me, and I in him, he it is that bears much fruit. For apart from me, you can do nothing. If anyone does not abide in me, he is thrown away like a branch and withers, and the branches are gathered, thrown into the fire, and burned. If you abide in me, and my words abide in you, ask whatever you wish, and it will be done for you. By this my Father is glorified, that you bear much fruit, and so prove to be my disciples. This is the Gospel of the Lord. We confess our historic Christian faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ,
grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Last week we heard the extremely comforting words of Jesus and also those of Psalm 23. From Jesus, we heard Jesus say, I am the good shepherd. And the good shepherd lays down his life for you, the sheep. And from Psalm 23, we hear that confession of King David, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. And these passages reflect a great reality of the Christian life. That no matter what you go through, no matter the valleys that you walk through, no matter the wolves that come to seek to devour your soul and your spirit, Christ is with you. Christ protects you, and he alone saves you. But that is not the only reality at play in the Christian life. Last week and this week deliver two truths that show the Christian life. Truth one was last week, that Jesus is your good shepherd who loves you and dies for you. And this week we get truth number two, that being connected into Christ, you are to love others. We hear this from Jesus in our gospel from John 15. Hear his words again. <clears throat> I am the true vine. And my Father is the vine dresser. Every branch of mine that does not bear fruit, he takes away. And every branch that does bear fruit, he prunes, that it may bear more fruit. Jesus teaches here that the expectation for the Christian, for, that you will bear fruit. Now, when he talks about bearing fruit, he's not talking about apples growing from your limbs, but he is speaking of good works. The second table of the law, loving your neighbor as yourself. St. James, in his epistle, says this about good works and its connection with faith in the second chapter. He says, what good is it, my brothers, if someone says he has faith, but does not have works. Can that faith save him? Faith by itself, if it does not have works, is dead. Now here St. James is not preaching works righteousness or that you're saved by your works, far from it. But rather he teaches and speaks that from genuine faith will flow good works. Faith naturally produces its fruit, that those who have faith in Christ will seek to love others. Now, as sinful people, that fruit will not be perfect. The only perfect fruit comes from Christ himself, of which we will participate in the Lord's Supper later in the service. But we are called as Christians to strive to do good works, to love our neighbor as ourselves. And in fact, if we see someone who claims to be a Christian and yet never does any good works or seeks to do so, it could be a sign that there is a lack of true faith. But notice what Jesus says in our gospel text about how one bears fruit. He says, abide in me and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit by itself, unless it abides in the vine. Neither can you, unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. Whoever abides in me and I in him, he it is that bears much fruit. For apart from me, you can do nothing. You see, Jesus says that it is only possible to bear fruit, to bear good works, you abide in him, in the vine. And this is exactly why we need both of those truths mentioned earlier. That Jesus is your good shepherd who lays his life down for you, out of love for you. And that connected to him, you are to love 
your neighbor. For if you take just one of those truths and leave the other, you are left with an incomplete life. If you just take truth number one, that you believe in Jesus and you love him, and yet you don't seek to love your neighbor or do anything good for others, then do you really know God? Do you really believe? St. John in our epistle and St. James in his epistle would argue no. And or truth too. If you are doing good works and you're, you're caring for those around you, and yet you are not abiding in Christ and not connected into that vine, then Jesus says your works are worthless. You are as if a branch that is cut off and thrown into the fire and burned for eternity. And so you must have both of these truths. Belief in Christ, knowing that he loves you and cares for you and dies for you. And also, from that love, showing love to your neighbor. This is the Christian life. It is one of being loved and showing love. We hear this in our epistle from 1 John, where he writes, Beloved, let us love one another, for love is from God. And whoever loves has been born of God and knows God. Anyone who does not love does not know God, because God is love. In this, the love of God was made manifest among us, that God sent his only Son into the world, so that we might live through him. In this is love, not that we have loved God, but that he loved us and sent his Son to be the propitiation for our sins. Beloved, if God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. And he gives a beautiful summary of this just a few verses later when he says, we love because he first loved us. Love flows from God to you, to the neighbor. God calls you to love, for he has shown you what love is. He is love incarnate, that he would take your sins and go to the cross and die for you, that you would have life in him, that you then would, from that love, that love that has saved you from sin and death, would then go and love your neighbor. This love of neighbor is such an integral part of the Christian life that John in the epistle doubles down on this idea. Again, he says, we love because he first loved us. If anyone says, I love God and hates his brother, he is a liar. For he who does not love his brother whom he has seen cannot love God whom he has not seen. And this commandment we have from him. Whoever loves God must also love his brother. The love of God and the love of neighbor flow from each other. You cannot have one without the other. Jesus teaches as much in Matthew 25, no doubt where John is getting this idea from, when Jesus uses the parable of the sheep and the goats. To the sheep, he says, blessed are you, for when I was hungry, you gave me food. When I was thirsty, you gave me something to drink. When I was in need, you provided for me. And the sheep, kind of taken aback, say, Lord, when did we see you in these situations? When would you, did we see you hungry and feed you? When did we see you thirsty and give you something to drink? And Jesus turns to them and says, Truly I say to you, whatever you did for the least of these, my brothers, you did for me. But these sheep, in their loving of others, loving their neighbor, they show their love of Christ. They show their faith in him. And then, on the contrary, Jesus turns to the goats and says, Cursed are you 
For when I was hungry, you did not give me food. When I was thirsty, you did not give me drink. When I was in need, you did not provide for me. And the goats also taken aback say, Lord, when did we see you hungry, thirsty, in need, and not provide for you? If we would have seen you in those situations, then certainly we would have helped you. After all, we love you. Jesus says, Truly I say to you, whatever you do not do for the least of these, my brothers, you do not do for me. From faith flows good works. From the love of God flows love for the neighbor. Our Lutheran confessions say this quite clearly and beautifully in the Augsburg Confession, Article 20, on good works. They write, the Holy Spirit is received through faith. Hearts are renewed and given new affections. And then they are able to bring forth good works. They then quote St. Ambrose, who says it this way. Faith is the mother of a good will and doing what is right. So we see very nicely laid out there what the Christian faith looks like. It is first and foremost faith in Christ, given by the Holy Spirit, that we believe in Christ who died and rose for us. That is faith. Then from that faith, from that love of God, we produce good works. We love our neighbor as ourselves, doing, according to Scripture, what is true and right. Our good works flow from Christ and his good work on the cross, that by his saving death and resurrection, we are saved and then would live in love for others. And so in these two weeks, we have seen these two truths of the Christian life. Truth number one, Jesus saying, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. That Jesus goes to the cross to suffer and die in your place. That you would have life and forgiveness in his name. And truth number two. Jesus said, I am the vine. You are the branches. Whoever abides in me and I in him, he it is that bears much fruit. If anyone does not abide in me, he is thrown away like a branch and withers. And the branches are gathered, thrown into the fire, and burned. It is being connected into Christ, the true vine, that you, the branches, then bear fruit. That you love others. And it is only in connection to him that you produce such fruit. It is those who abide in Christ who truly have life and love others. And so, therefore, strive to live out those two truths. Abide in your good shepherd who loves you and died and rose for you. And abide in that vine that you may in turn love your brother. Amen. Now may the peace of God which passes all understanding guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. Please stand for the prayer of the church. Almighty God, we give thanks for all your goodness and bless you for the love that sustains us from day to day. We praise you for the gift of your Son, our Savior, in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. We thank you for the Holy Spirit, the Comforter, for your Holy Church, for the means of grace, for the lives of all faithful and just people, and for the hope of the life to come. Help us to treasure in our hearts all that you have done for us, 
and enable us to show our thankfulness in lives that are wholly given to your service. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Save and defend your whole church, purchased with the precious blood of Christ. Strengthen your faithful people through the word and the holy sacraments, making them perfect in love and in all good works, and establishing in them the faith once delivered to the saints. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Grant your wisdom and heavenly grace to all pastors and to those who hold office in your church, that by their devoted service, faith may abound and your kingdom increase. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Send the light of your truth into all the earth. Raise up faithful servants of Christ to advance the gospel both at home and in distant lands. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In your mercy, strengthen newly established congregations and support them in challenging times. Make them steadfast, abounding in the work of the Lord, and let their faith and zeal for the gospel refresh and renew the witness of your people everywhere. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Preserve our nation in justice and honor, that we may lead a peaceable life with integrity. Grant health and favor to all who bear office in our land, especially the President and Congress of the United States, the Governor and Legislature of this state, and to all those who make, administer, and judge our laws. Help them to serve this people according to your holy will. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our Take from us all hatred and prejudice. Give us the spirit of love and order our days in your peace. Prosper the labor of those who work to bring peace and justice to the nations of the world, that mutual understanding and common endeavor may be increased among all peoples. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Bless the schools of the church and all colleges, universities, and centers of research, and those who teach and work in them. Grant your wisdom in such measure that people may serve you honorably in church and state, and that our common life may be conformed to the ways of your truth. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Sanctify our homes with your presence and bless them with joy. Keep our children in the covenant of their baptism and enable their parents to bring them up in lives of faith and devotion. Unite the members of all families in a spirit of affection and service that they may show your praise in our land and in all the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Let your blessing remain upon the seed time and harvest, the commerce and industry, the leisure and rest, the arts and culture of our people. Take under your special protection those whose work is difficult or dangerous, and be with all who put their hands to any useful task. Give them the just rewards for their labor, and the knowledge that their work is a blessing in your sight. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. By your word and Holy Spirit, Comfort all who are in sorrow or need, sickness or adversity. We especially pray this day for Joan, Pat, Charles, Steve, Brad, Audrey, Roy, the family of John Wilbanks, Les, Judy, Amelia, Cash, Maynard, Pete, Tom, Mike, Mar, George, Keith, Edith, Harvey, Delaney, Drew, and all of our shadows. Be with those who suffer persecution for the faith. Have mercy on those to whom death draws near. Bring consolation to those in sorrow, and grant to all a measure of your love, taking them into your tender care. 
Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. All these things and whatever else you know that we need, grant us, Father, for the sake of him who died and rose again and now lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated, seated for the offering. <coughs> Please stand for the offertory on page 159. of the resurrection. 
with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, Blessed are you, Lord of heaven and earth, for you have had mercy on those whom you created and sent your only begotten Son into our flesh to bear our sin and be our Savior. With repentant joy, we receive the salvation accomplished for us by the all-availing sacrifice of his body and his blood on the cross. Gathered in the name and the remembrance of Jesus, we beg you, O Lord, to forgive, renew, and strengthen us with your word and spirit. Grant us faithfully to eat his body and drink his blood, as he bids us do in his own testament. Gather us together, we pray, from the ends of the earth, to celebrate with all the faithful the marriage feast of the Lamb in his kingdom, which has no end. Graciously receive our prayers. Deliver and preserve us. To you alone, O Father, be all glory, honor, and worship with the Son and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us for our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. But I am the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Hey, he, this is my body, which is given for you, this do in remembrance of me. In the same way also, he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
please stand as we sing Thank the Lord on page 164. We give thanks to you, almighty God, that you have refreshed us through this salutary gift, and we implore you that of your mercy you would strengthen us through the same in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen.